Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through His Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and 5, for without me, ye can do nothing. Please understand, family, that we only alive because God has given us the gift of life. We can't live without God. We can't do nothing without him. So let's open up this Bible study with Psalms 119. And let's take a look at verses one through eight. And it says, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed. When I have respect unto all thy commandments, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, I will keep thy statutes or forsake me not utterly. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus name. Amen. So once again, welcome on in family. Happy Sunday to everybody. I pray that everybody is doing well. And, uh, you know, I pray that everybody had a, a good Sabbath yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, what we're going to take a look at today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent his Holy Spirit and inspired me to do. And that is don't resist God's wisdom. His wisdom is ordained unto eternal life. God is literally giving us the instructions on how to live forever. But us human beings that's hard headed. And want to do what we want to do, we tend to find ourselves rejecting God's wisdom over and over and over again, day in and day out. And what we cannot do is reject someone who is bringing the word to you. If you can go and read this out the Bible, don't reject it. Whatever somebody is telling you, that's why the scripture said, try the spirit by the spirit. Because God is warning us. He's warning us from the impending doom that's going to take place upon this earth. And upon, and upon our lives If we don't repent from sin We are in trouble <clears throat> Excuse me So let's get on into this Once again, it's don't resist God's wisdom His wisdom is ordained unto eternal life And one thing about the truth uh, Like the scriptures that we're going to take a look at The truth, it hurts However, it's very necessary for us to turn from our sins You don't want somebody sugarcoating uh, the word of God down to you. You don't want you don't want nobody that's going to uh, be partial in judgment. All right. You always want somebody to tell you the truth so that you can make proper choices and decisions on how to run your life. And you can't go wrong with the word of God. But let's get on into this. Let's go back over here to Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4. and We'll take a look at verse 1. And uh, I want to say something else, too. Whenever anybody try to, <clears throat> excuse me, call or send e emails uh, for counseling, I'm going to read you the scriptures. If you don't believe the scriptures, there's nothing that I can do for you. If you don't believe God, there's nothing that I can help you with. So please, if you don't believe that God can heal you and help you out, don't don't come looking to me for, to do anything because I can't do nothing. That, that God that that he won't allow me to do I can't do nothing without God There's nothing that I can do That Christ Jesus can't do for you Okay simple as that If you don't believe then hey I pray that your faith is healed But other than that When I'm telling the truth If it's offensive Hey so be it Hopefully it'll make you change But let's take a look at this Deuteronomy 4 and verse 1 it says, now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments, which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. 
So God is telling Israel, when I give you this land, the laws, statutes and commandments that I give to you to live by, that's how you are supposed to govern yourselves. This is the constitution of the nation of Israel. Actually, the word of God or the, the laws that God gave to Israel is the laws that's going to govern the whole world. OK, because we have one lawgiver, we have one king and one high priest which is Jesus Christ. And when he take over this world, these same laws that he gave to Israel is what's going to govern the nations. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. Let me show you something else. Verse two, it says, ye shall not add unto the word, which I command you, neither shall ye diminish off from it. So we shouldn't be adding our own twist to it and we shouldn't be taking nothing away from it. We got to deal with it in its purest form without it being watered down. All right. It says that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So once again, we supposed to keep the Lord's commandments just the way he told us to. Verse three, he says, your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God have destroyed them from among you. So all of these people that were serving after false gods and following after false gods, the Lord said he destroyed them, which Lord willing, we're going to be taking a look at these false gods very, very soon. It says, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord, your God are alive, every one of you this day. So the ones that held on to God, those were the ones that were still alive. God is a jealous God and he ain't going for no false worship. He said he ain't going to share his glory with another. OK, he says, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, my God, commanded me that you should do so in the land, whether ye go to possess it. So the laws, statutes and commandments that God was given to the nation of Israel. He was telling them, these are the laws that you are supposed to live by. This is the constitution of the nation of Israel, the laws of God. It says, keep, therefore, and do them. Why? What is it? What is God's laws, statutes and commandments unto us? For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So if Israel, if our people would have just did what was right and followed after what thus saith the Lord with a whole heart and not wavering, not adding and taking away from the word of God. Everybody else, all of the other nations would have been flocking to our nation to get this wisdom that God had gave to us. And it's supposed to be distributed out over the whole world because the Lord, he want everybody to come back to him and listen to him. OK, so once again, these same laws and this wisdom that God has given us, it comes through obedience to the word of God. Then the scriptures say the. Uh. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So that's why we got to depart from evil, because once you stop doing evil and you make it up in your mind that you want to repent from all your sins, that's wisdom. You, you are very wise because you know that God can do something to you for continuing to sin against him. And we want to avoid that. So let's just be obedient. Let's see what else the Lord do. Let's take a look at this in Deuteronomy 10 and verse 12. Let's see what else he said concerning this wisdom that he gave us. It says, and now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. This is what the Lord is requiring of all of us. He wants all of us to love him with all our heart and with all our soul. It says to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. See, being obedient to the voice of the Lord is for our good. It keeps us away from evil. It keeps us from getting our head cracked when we go in contrary against the Lord. It keeps us from that. Because everybody should know that when you blatantly go against God, you... You you challenging God, you're going you gonna to get what you're looking for. And you won't win that fight. God can do some things like you wouldn't even imagine. So just submit to him. 
Because God is running a campaign where you better submit or perish. And that's just all it is to it. Ain't no sugarcoating this. The word of God, it don't change. And what I'm starting to realize now is the more and more we deal with what thus saith the Lord, his word don't change. We got to keep, if problems and everything keep arising, we got to keep hitting these problems with the word of God. We got to keep turning back to the Lord because he's the only one that can solve anything. But a lot of people, they don't like to hear that. They want they want their ears scratched. I'm not here for that. I'm not going to do that. And I suggest that you don't either. We got to tell the truth, whether you like it or not. The truth hurts. But guess what? It's necessary for us. It's good. The truth is of God. Let's go and take a look at something else. Ecclesiastes 12. Let's see what King Solomon said. Let's see what he had written for us. Ecclesiastes 12. And let's just take a look at verse eight. It says, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. So in other words, just like how uh, Jesus said, uh, he gonna, everything in this earth is going to pass away. Well, King Solomon is saying the same thing. Don't nothing really mean nothing. Whatever happened last week, it look, a thousand years from now, that stuff ain't going to matter. A hundred years from now, it ain't going to matter. Ain't nobody going to even remember you. Only God. So all of this stuff that we're dealing with in the earth right now, all this stuff is is it's going to pass away. Everything that we see is temporary. But what we don't see is eternal. It says, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. And a lot of times this is why some of these videos get uploaded late. Because I'm searching through the scriptures, I'm reading and trying to put together things the way the Holy Ghost would have me to put them together. I can't just come before the people just putting anything together. I'm taking the time, I'm listening and being patient, listening to the Holy Ghost as he's giving it to me. And then after, after I get it, I compose it and give it to you all. But this is why we do this. Because the Lord is compelling us to do this. It says verse 10. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. So that's what the preacher was searching the scriptures to do. To get to feed the people, because when we read the word, we feed our soul. We're not consuming no garbage. We're not watering down the word of God. Let's see what else the word of God is doing. It said the words of the wise are, are as golds. And his nails fastened by the masses of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. That one shepherd is Jesus Christ, the chief shepherd. So he said the words of the wise are as golds. Let's take a look and see in this Bible dictionary what a gold is. So we're going to take a look at the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. And we're going to find out exactly what a gold is. So let's take a look. What is a gold? And then we're going to uh, further expound on that. Uh, scripture it says gold a rod generally about eight feet long with a pointed end used to control cattle so the words of the wise are as gold so it's gonna prick you it's gonna make you uncomfortable ain't no don't nobody care about your feelings yo your feelings do not trump the word of god simple as that and that goes for all of us, including myself. I'm not exempt from this because I'm reading the script. No, I'm subject to this. So let's continue. It says the sayings of the wise are as golds or like a nail studded stick with which a shepherd drives sheep. So in other words, it'll prick your conscience. The truth is what pricks your conscience. You can't never sit up here and say the word of God is a lie. Never. You know it's the truth. That's why certain people respond to it uh, adversely and some people re respond to it and receiving it well because you know it's the truth. So once again, the words of the wise are as golds and as nails fastened by the masses of assembly. So the word of God is going to prick you into doing the right thing. It's going to prick that conscience because you know when you're doing wrong and when you're doing right. You know it. The Holy Spirit will put it on your mind. You know you ain't right. 
and then you start feeling bad. You know, if you was right, you would be agreeing with yourself. You ain't going to feel bad on your own. <laughs> so, you know, it's got to be somebody else that's making you feel bad. Who is that? None other than God. That's who it is. He putting it on your mind. You know, you should have did that better. You know, you should have listened to me and did this. That's what the Holy Ghost do. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he says the words of the wise are as goals and as nails fastened by the masses of assemblies. So once again, it's going to uh, prick you into doing the right thing. It's going to prick your conscience and you're going to be uh, fast and like you can't move. You'll be immovable. OK, it says which are given from one shepherd. That one shepherd is none other than Jesus Christ. Let's go and take a look. Let's match this precept up now. Let's go over here and look at what happened with uh, Saul. Because uh, his name was later converted to Paul, but uh, th he was the one that was persecuting the church. They uh, laid their clothes down at the feet of Paul when they stoned Stephen. Now, let's take a look at what happened when he was on his way. Here to, uh, uh, on his road to Damascus, even on his way to go and persecute more the church of God. It says in Saul, this is Acts 9 and 1, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. So here it is, this guy's persecuting the body of Christ. So it says, in desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, if he found anybody that was trusting in Jesus Christ, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So he was hunting down the body of Christ, people who believed in Jesus. OK, so this guy, he's thinking one way before he gets this conversion on the road to Damascus. God pricked his heart. Watch this. He actually appeared to him. It says, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? See what Paul was doing. He was persecuting Jesus because all of us are connected one to another. That's why I dare not. I will never, ever say anything bad about nobody. I'm not going to put you down. I'm not going to be belittling you. You the body of Christ. We was all made in the and created in the image of God. I hate myself if I'm doing that. I'm lacking empathy if I'm doing that. So God forbid that ever happen. Verse five. And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I put this little note right here. A figure of useless resistance to a greater power. Man, you can't fight against God and win. We just saw what a, a goal was. He said in the gold and the prick is the same thing. You'll tear yourself up trying to fight against the pricks. Don't go against the grain. Do what God told you to do. Simple as that. That's the message. It says, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So let's go and see what happened. Cause he, now he's asking the question, Lord, what you want me to do? Cause Jesus ain't come to him for no reason. He had a, he was, he was sent on a mission. Well, Paul was going to be appointed to the uh, uh, Gentiles to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So the Lord had commissioned him to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So let's go and take a look at this. The other nations. This is who Paul was speaking to. This is why we got so many epistles of his written to the Corinthians, the Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. These are Gentile uh, uh, nations. Let's see. And here he have authority from the chief priests. This was Ananias uh, uh, speaking. It says, and here he have authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So really, Paul was blessed because you bless when you suffer in persecution for the word of God. For God's sake. So the Lord told Ananias, look, man, 
Go on about your business. Do what I told you to do. Because Paul is a chosen vessel unto me to go and spread my gospel to the Gentiles and kings and to the children of Israel. Okay, this is why Paul wrote the epistle to the Hebrews. So he was talking to everybody. Wasn't holding no punches. Let's go and see something else. Because Paul, before he got this conversion, he's going to see, we're going to let him tell us the type of person that he was. And we we showing this right here because we want people to understand that it's all about repentance. When you truly come back to Christ, repent and leave that stuff alone. Whatever you were sinning against God, leave that stuff alone. Don't go back that way. So look at what Paul said. First Timothy 1 and 12, it says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. So he was hurting people, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. This is why Paul obtained mercy because he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't have a full understanding of the persecution that he was doing. He was just following after tradition. Okay. So once again, he didn't have full knowledge of what he was doing. This is why he obtained mercy from the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus said he will have mercy on whom he will. He says, in the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. He said, Man, the Lord, he showed me so much grace, just like he showed all of us grace. All of us have done things worthy of death, but nevertheless, the Lord has still given us the gift of life. Come on, man. We got to be appreciative for this grace and this gift of life that Jesus Christ has given us because we can't live without him. He said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He said, this is what Jesus came into the world for, to save sinners. He says, how be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. So he was patient with Paul. He saw exactly what he was doing. That's why he came to him on that road to Damascus. He was on his way to go and persecute some more of the church. But the Lord gave him a change of heart. And he told him that it was useless for him to kick against the pricks. You only going to hurt yourself trying to go against God. So why resist his wisdom? Just do what he say. When he calling us, we should be asking, Lord, what is it that you want your servant to do? Here I am and give us the heart to do it perfectly according to your will so that we can be found worthy of all acceptation of the work that you didn't committed us to do. It said that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Who would not want to live forever? Don't you want to live forever with the with the riches and the glory in the kingdom of God with Jesus Christ and the father and the rest of the saints? Well, that's what his information is, is doing. His the, the wisdom that Jesus Christ has given us is ordained unto eternal life. Just like you got to study to be a lawyer, a pilot or whatever the case. We studying on how to become God. Or how to be adopted by God. How to become immortal. Let me say that. All right. So let's go and take a look at this. <clears throat> let's go and take a look at this over here. Uh, because the wisdom of God is... Very good. This is why we can't reject it. Look at this. Let's see what Jesus is speaking. What is coming out of the mouth of God and the father? Because this is the father's wisdom. Just like Jesus said in John 12, this wisdom that I'm speaking, this is the Lord's. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. So this don't belong to us. So let's take a look. Proverbs, Proverbs uh, 2. Let's take a look at verse 6. How can you reject his wisdom? You're not wise if you're doing that. It says, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. The Lord is the one that gives wisdom. He's the source of all wisdom. And the things that he speak is true and right. 
He give knowledge and understanding. It says he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So he's our defense and our offense when we are doing the correct things that's pleasing to him. It says he keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. He always going to protect our path. Didn't King David say, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet will I fear no evil? Because God is with him. Just like he'll be with us when we obey him and when we walk in, in the spirit of Jesus Christ. It says, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. So then you'll be able to discern between what's right and what's wrong, which way you should go and which way you shouldn't go when you receive God's wisdom. There is nothing like having God's wisdom, family. It said, when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Wisdom got to enter in. So you got to open a door for it. You got to be willing to receive it. It says. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. So it's going to make you behave a certain way. You'll behave wisely. It says to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things. You're going to even know who to avoid when you receive God's wisdom. Let's go and take a look at something else. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15 and verse 31. Let's see what this says. Proverbs 15 and 31. It says, The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. So when you hearing what you should do, or when you hearing the word of God, when it's leading you and guiding you and correcting you, you abiding among the wise. You will be considered a wise person. But what happened when you rejecting God's wisdom? You don't want to hear nothing about God. Somebody reading the scriptures and you talking about, oh, man, that ain't true. Somebody did. OK, you rejecting God's wisdom. Let's take a look. Everybody, the Lord, somebody said, uh, uh. Man wrote the Bible. Yeah, man wrote it out, but he didn't write what he he didn't write the contents of it. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This ain't no book that some man just said, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Listen, if you have any knowledge or understanding of who God is, please understand that he's able to preserve his word to a thousand generations. You think man is stronger than God and he going to allow his word to be corrupted? By some mere mortal man that's going to perish? Absolutely not. You don't really truly understand God if you're thinking like that. Once again, verse 32, it says, He that receive, refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. When you refuse God's instruction, you despise your own soul is what the scriptures are saying. It says, But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. So this is why when you're talking to somebody and they ain't trying to hear you, let them go. Let them do whatever they want to do. They'll find out. They wickedness will catch up with them. Eventually, they'll, they'll, their heart will discover itself. You'll see that you're wrong. Your conscience prick you when you're wrong. Unless you're evil and God gave you over to a reprobate mind, now you don't know. Now you can't discern between what's right and what's wrong. But it says the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. So that the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil, fam. And before honor is humility. So you want to be honored? You got to be humble. Simple as that. Let's go and take a look at something else. Because God has given us great wisdom. Didn't the uh, Ten Commandments, the Fifth Commandment said that uh, we're supposed to honor our mother and our father, right? So let me show you something. Let me show you what happened. If you can't honor your mother and your father and listen to them, what makes you think you're going to listen to God? God is the one that's telling you to listen to them. And this is what I was saying originally earlier. If a person is asking me for counsel and I'm telling you all about what thus saith the Lord and you still doubting, why are you calling me? Don't call me. Don't do not call me. If you don't have faith in God, don't call me. You got to go and pray to God first. I can't give you no faith. I can't do I can't do no more than what God allowed me to do. And I certainly can't do more than God. 
Don't call me. If you lack in faith, call, go and pray to God. Go and get that situation right with him. But don't call me. If you don't believe these scriptures, we don't have nothing to talk about. If you are not open to receive what thus saith the Lord, we ain't got nothing to talk about. I'm not about to waste my time. There's a whole lot of other people out here that need the truth and they trying to receive it. They ain't, you know, you giving somebody, you telling somebody about something and everything you read them. No, I just don't believe that. But what, 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 what are we talking about? We ain't got nothing to talk about no more. So once again, this is what I'm saying. Well, this is what we read. Deuteronomy 21 and verse 18. So if you can't listen to your earthly parents or someone who was given wise counsel and it's coming from God. You ain't going to want to hear God. Because like like how Jesus and the father, they were sending prophets to warn people before destruction came and they weren't listening to those prophets that were sent. So since they weren't listening to the prophets, they wasn't listening to God. And therefore, calamity happened. God brought some drama and destruction. But let's take a look at what happened when you don't listen to your parents and you want to be rebellious. You rebelling against God's wisdom. Let's take a look. Because the Lord told us we got to honor our mother and our father. We got to obey them. Listen to them. Let's take a look at verse 18. It says, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father, or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto him or unto them. So this is the law of someone who has a child or rebellious son in their house or daughter, someone who is rebellious in their house to their parents. Let's see what happened. It says, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city. And unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city. This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. So obviously this man is of age. He's able to drink. And he eating up everything. So he lays. He just sitting there. He ain't doing nothing. He rebelling against his parents. Let's see what the elders had to say. And all of this wisdom came from God. Let's see what, the, what, what did the Lord have written here? What was supposed to happen to that person? And all of the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. So when you rebelling against the, the, the wisdom of your parents. <clears throat> and it's coming from the word of God. Man, you see what was happening back in these days? They'll take you out to the elders and they heard that what was going on. They'll stone you. They'll put you to death right on the spot. Let's go and see something else. Somebody else who uh, didn't listen to their parents or his father. Let's go and take a look at Eli's sons. First Samuel 2. First Samuel 2 and let's take a look at verse 22. Now Eli's sons, they were very wicked. They were dealing with a very perverse and uh, lustful spirit. So let's see what happened with these guys. It says, now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Wait a second. Women coming in to have church and the, these, the priests of the sons is sleeping with the women in the tabernacle. You know how wicked that is? That's wicked. That is truly wicked. Here they are coming to worship God and here these two men are coming to sleep. with. First of all, this is out of order. What is on your mind that you're doing something like this? It can't be nothing other than Satan the devil. How can you do? How can you think like this? At a certain point, you got to crucify this flesh, man. You got to crucify this flesh. But it says, and he said unto them, why do ye such things? For I hear of all your for I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. Of course you do. Somebody see that? They get to talking about what, what they got going on. Man, do you understand that ain't nobody gonna really want to come over there? Because of what's happening? 
But nevertheless, let's take a look. He said, if one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? The Lord is the mediator. Now you sin against him. You ain't, man, you ain't got a leg to stand on. You better repent. But if you go against the mediator, are you in trouble? It said, notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Whew. Said they didn't listen to their father because the Lord was going to slay them. The Lord hardened their heart. Just like he did uh, the men in Joshua. What was that? Joshua 11, I believe that was. I just want to flash over to show you that God, he indeed controls the hearts of men. I just want to show you this. Joshua 11 and 20, it says, For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. So if the Lord want to get you, he can put it on your mind to keep doing what's wrong. He can give you what's called a reprobate mind. And God is just in doing so because obviously he saw something in your heart where you kept rejecting him and going against him. And now, therefore, he got to come and get you. He'll lock you in the way, into the way you think. And let's go and take a look at somebody else who is rejecting God's wisdom. So we see Eli. They rejected. He, uh, uh, Eli's sons rejected his wisdom. Let's go and take a look at King Amaziah. Second Chronicles 25. Now watch this. Amaziah, he had just went out to war with the children of Seir, the Edomites, and he won. But what he messed up at was he took their gods. And let's take a look, because what God is going to do, he's going to send a prophet over here to warn King Amaziah. But King Amaziah, he's so caught up in himself, and he asks him the question, are you with the king's clique? Are you are you in my group? Like some people, they don't even want to hear you unless you go to their class. That man, that's folly. You in the flesh still. If somebody's speaking the word of God, you should be able to hear them wherever you at, whether you go to class or not. But you got a lot of people that's like that. They brainwashed. It's almost like a cult type of mentality. We don't deal with that. We deal with the true word of God. But anyway, let's take a look at this. Second Chronicles 25 and verse 14. It said, now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the children of Sair and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Lord just gave this man the battle with Mount Sair. And here you are taking they gods. Look at what happened. Wherefore, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah. And he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him. So the Lord sent a prophet unto King Amaziah. What did he say? Why hast thou sought, off, sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? He said, why are you looking to these false gods that couldn't even save these people that you just slew? You just killed them. These gods couldn't even save them. Why are you bowing down to these gods? And it came to pass as he talked with them, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's council? So in other words, I, are you part of my clique? Do you go to this congregation like how they do nowadays? Oh, you're not part of the IUIC, the ISUPK, or the IOG, the ICOJ. They don't want to hear you. Wow. Art thou made of the king's council? Forbear. Why shouldest thou be smitten? He said, man, be quiet. Why are you going to be smitten? Why are you going to get hurt or killed? It says, then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God have determined to destroy thee because thou has done this and has not hearkened unto my counsel. So his, the handwriting was on the wall. The prophet said, now I know that God is going to destroy you because you ain't listening. And a lot of times that's what happened when you don't listen to wise counsel. And you don't repent from that foolishness that you're doing. You'll get destroyed. Let's let the scriptures tell us. This is why it's wise for us to listen and obey the voice of the Lord. We got to deal with all aspects. Let's take a look at this. This is the reality. This is the truth. Proverbs 29 and 1. It says, he 
that being often reproved, hardened his, his neck. So you you hard headed when you constantly getting whooped and you ain't learning a lesson. It says shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. So you keep listening. I mean, you keep not listening. You keep rejecting God's wisdom and counsel that's ordained unto eternal life. You're going to wind up getting destroyed. Let's go and take a look at something else. Luke 12. Let's have a look at this. Luke 12. And let's read verse 43. That's why we got to get some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what thus saith the Lord and actually apply it. Because for the most part, God is going to hold us accountable. Whether we know or not. Now let's go and read about it. Luke 12 and 43, it says, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So this is why we got to get the word of God and hold on to it. Because the Lord can come for us at any day, family. So we bless when we found doing what thus saith the Lord. It says, Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Whoa. So you decide to turn back and stop keeping the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. God said he'll sneak up on you and he'll come up on you in a day that you ain't even aware of. Just when you having fun, here he come. Remember like when your father or your mother, when them, uh, when it got too dark and you out playing, riding your bike too late. And here you see them coming up the street with a belt. Oh, my goodness. You in trouble. Your heart drop. It's the same thing that's going to happen with the Lord. He'll come for you in a day when you ain't even thinking about it. You should have just kept on the right path. Don't leave off that path of righteousness. He said, you'll get a, your portion appointed with the unbelievers. You know where the unbelievers are going? Let me just show you where the unbelievers are going. Let's go over here to Matthew. I mean, not Matthew. Let's go over to uh, Revelation. I want to just show you some where the unbelievers are going to go. And we read all of these things because we want to be aware that we don't want to go here. We don't want no parts of this. Let's go and take a look at... Uh, I want to go and look at... Uh, Revelations 21 and 8. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and all idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's where the unbelievers are going. We don't want that. Verse 47, Luke 12 and 47 now, it says, and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You don't know what those many stripes going to be. It could be the hottest place in the lake of fire. Y you never know. You just never know. But one thing for sure, you know God going to get, he going to give you them stripes. Because you knew better. We can't go against God when we know better. Even when we don't know better, we ain't supposed to go against God. But we definitely... We're going to be held accountable and we're going to be he held to a more strict punishment because we do know better. Now you challenging God. It says, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. So you see how either way it go, you still going to get a beating. But when you know better, it's even worse. When you don't know, God taking it easy on you. He says, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him will they ask the more. So guess what? The more you have, the more responsibility you have, the more people going to look to you, just like God. God is expecting us to do what's right when we know better, family. Ain't no backsliding and going back. Ain't none of that. So let's start wrapping this up. Luke, Luke 11. Because all of these commandments and things that God has given us, they are ordained unto eternal life, family. Luke 11 and verse 27. Let's see what this says. It says, and it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. 
But he said, yeah, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So you bless when you hear the word of God and keep it. Why is that? I'm going to show you why. Revelations 22 and verse 14, it says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Whoa. So that's why you bless, because you got eternal life coming. And right above that, the Lord said he coming quickly and he going to give every man according to his work shall be. He going to reward everybody according to what they have done, whether it was good or bad. So this is why we got to get on the ball, family. Let's get let's let's tighten up this walk that we walk in. Because we all make mistakes. We all fall short. But at the end of the day, we can't waddle in those mistakes because that's when Satan going to come over there and pick you up. He'll come and get you. He'll take your mind away from God. So don't let that happen. So once again, we've seen how the scriptures told us out of the mouth of Jesus, blessed are you when you hear the word of God and keep it. Let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and look at uh, John 12. Let's see what Jesus was saying over here in John 12, because he obviously gave us instructions that's leading to eternal life, family. John 12, and let's take a look at verse... Uh, let's take a look at verse 47. He says, and if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. Mm, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. So if you don't believe God's words, he said he ain't come to uh, uh, condemn the world or judge the world when he came the first time, but to save it. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words have one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Whoa. This same word that we read out of the Bible is what's going to judge us in the last day. So it wouldn't make sense for uh, a man to corrupt the text. First of all, now you saying that God doesn't have all power if you saying that the text has been corrupted. Because now God wouldn't have a righteous leg to stand on if man has corrupted the text why is he saying that these same words gonna be uh, uh judging us in the last day we wouldn't we we would have an excuse lord we didn't know man corrupted the text no no the lord he preserved his word throughout all generations many people have tried to discredit god they tried to burn the bible but no matter how hard they try God always had his words preserved in every generation. As a matter of fact, I just want to show you something. Psalms 12. Psalms 12 and verse 6. It says, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. God has preserved his word in every generation. And every generation, no matter what language you speak, the word of God has always been here. And as a matter of fact, from what I heard, the Bible is the number one selling book. OK, so once again, let's go and take a look at this. If man wrote the Bible, how come he didn't erase his demise out of here? How come God triumphs and man don't? We know man always want to triumph over God. You know, that ain't happening. But anyway, John 12, once again, verse 49, he says, for I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. So guess what? When we read in the word, this is the father's word. Jesus just told us, he says, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. What? The things that God commanded us is life everlasting is giving us the instructions on how to live forever eternally with the father and the rest of the saints in Jesus Christ. Yep. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. So Jesus said, I'm not the, I'm not speaking nothing other than what the father told me to speak. I'm only speaking what he want me to speak. And that's all it is to it. This is why when God is speaking, we have to listen. We can't reject this wisdom. You see what happened when you start resisting God's wisdom. Let's go and look at this one last place. Hebrews three. Because really, when you start rejecting his wisdom, 
That means you lacking faith and your heart departed from him. That's really what's going on. So Hebrews 3 and verse 7, it says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and the day of temptation in the wilderness. So the day that you hear the word of God, don't harden your heart. Don't reject this wisdom. Okay, let's see what else he says. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Yeah, you will get upset with somebody that don't listen. Of course, you're going to get upset. Of course, you're going to lose patience with somebody. They, they, you seeing all of the wonders and the miracles of God. And then when you get upset with them, oh, I'm offended because you're upset with me. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Just close your lips right on up. You offended because somebody telling you the truth. Man, be quiet. Knock it off. Even God said, wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Of course, you will be upset with somebody that's constantly rejecting God. It's a righteous indignation. It ain't nothing personal. But what's so hard about believing in God? everything that God said it come to pass? How you going to not believe him? But I guess that's where us as servants of God, we got to be patient with people who don't believe up until a certain point, because everybody got a breaking point. You just constantly even when you take a look at uh, when Jesus, when Jesus was healing people, he asked some people, do you believe that I can do this? They say, yeah. Some, some places he couldn't even do no great works because they didn't believe him. So he left. He says, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. So when you don't have no faith and you don't believe, that's an evil heart. Who you think gave you that heart? None other than Satan, the devil. So once again, that's don't resist God's wisdom. His wisdom is ordained unto eternal life. And now let's continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So let's go and take a look at this over here in 1 John, 1 John 2 and verse 1. Because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. And when we do sin, we got an advocate or, or, or so to speak, like a lawyer which is Jesus Christ. It says, my little children, these things write out unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So this is why we have to confess our sins and turn from those sins. We got to confess our sins in the name of Jesus. Okay. It says, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. God is the atonement. Jesus is the atonement for our sins and for the sins of the whole world and so with that being said father god we humbly coming before you asking for the forgiveness of the sins of our forefathers for the forgiveness of the sins of ourselves the body of christ the nation of israel as well as the stranger lord so father god we ask that you look down from heaven and create within us lord a heart that's going to serve you perfectly according to your will, for your great name's sake, Lord, so that we can be found worthy of your salvation when you appear in your kingdom. Father God, we ask for prayers on behalf of all of the less fortunate, the fatherless, the widows, the wrongfully imprisoned, the ones that's sick and afflicted among us, and just to name a few by name, we pray for our sister Oprah. We want to keep our sister Shantae in our prayers, our sister Rhody, my pops, sister Alicia, the Gok family, our brother Vince, uh, our sister Sherelle, our sister Lily, Amanda and Tom out there in the United Kingdom, our brother and sister Chris and Sharon out there in Florida, and our brother Kevon. So, Father God, we know that you're able to answer all prayers. We ask, Father God, that you bless us with your presence at all times, Lord. Hear our prayers and answer us according to your will, Father. In the almighty name of Jesus. So with that being said, family, I love you all so much. I pray that you all continue to fight this fight of faith each day that we wake up.
thank God for all of the mercy and the grace that he's given us because life is truly a gift. Let's try to find the beauty in life because it's all around us. The Lord is great. So with that being said, once again, I love you all so much. May the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. Until next time, peace in Jesus name.